Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make some stuffed chicken katsu meatballs. So if you guys are interested, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. So here are the list of ingredients you guys are going to need. It might seem like a lot, it's really not. And this whole entire thing goes by really fast. It's just pretty simple to make. You can have your whole family helping you out here. Alright, before you guys decide to start cooking this recipe, I want you guys to know the bowl of rice will be very hot to touch if you just scoop it out and try to make this. So let it sit out a good 10-15 minutes or so before you start this recipe, otherwise it'll be too hot to touch and I don't want you to burn yourselves. As you saw, I went ahead and added my sesame oil right into it and then I'm adding my seasoning. This is like that furikake seasoning that you guys have seen before. If you do not have this, don't worry about it. Chop up some veggies or just use the recipe without any of the seasoning itself. It's the sesame oil oil I think with the rice that really helps it but if you want to use just chopped fresh veggies I would suggest like onions and carrots and maybe some green onions as well just chop it up thinly saute them and then mix them up with your rice again making sure that it is cooled down before you decide to start doing all of this if you can find a dry vegetable seasoning packet that will also work as well so use any of those use it without I am just using what I had on hand. This is supposed to be easy for you guys. I don't want to make it complicated and have you guys running to the stores looking for all of these things. So again, use what you have and then let's just start mixing these things up until everything is mixed evenly and then we're going to set this aside. And again, if it's hot, just set it aside, let it cool down before you start up again. Now because I am using ground chicken in my recipe for this, you can use ground pork, ground turkey, ground beef, whatever you want, but I am using chicken to make this a ground chicken katsu meatball, a stuffed ground chicken katsu meatball. So I am using two pounds, two packages, a pound each, and we are going to just season this with salt and pepper to taste. If I had to guess, I'd probably say use like an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Again, season to taste, and then just blend it using clean hands or you wear, put your glove on or grab a spoon, whatever is easier for you. And notice that I am folding it all into the meat instead of just smashing it up with my fingers or anything like that because I don't want to ruin the texture of the ground chicken. All right, once you have that done, go ahead and set that aside and grab your eggs. I did state three on my ingredients list because that's exactly how many I needed to finish off making my whole entire meatball recipes. I made about 18 with two pounds of ground chicken and the rice and everything so three is what you need start with two if you're gonna make less or one I just do the math and just cut it up however you need to next I am grabbing paper plates or foam plates use whatever you have it just to make cleanup easier for me and because we are making meatballs I don't need a wide dish or a long dish or anything of the sort I did state about how much panko and how much flour you could use in this I like to use just whatever fits in my plate and then add more as needed so I don't waste anything and just throw it away. So I have my plate of panko and then I'm going to do the same thing with my flour. Again, pouring as much as you need. I didn't really measure this one out too much but it's about a quarter cup probably that you would need. Maybe no more than a half a cup for 18 meatballs is what I did use. So again, keep that in mind. And then I have another clean plate set out because I'm going to start rolling my meatballs and put them on these plates instead so that I can just have them separated and set aside. So this is how we're going to start this. First, let's grab your rice. Notice again, I just kind of measured this one out with my hand. You're going to see me using a spoon later. But we're going to go ahead and grab the rice and then we're going to add the meat right on top, flatten it out, and then flip your rice ball over and add it on top again. We are just going to make sure the rice is covered completely with the ground chicken that we have here until all of the rice is covered. As you're patting it down and moving it around, you're going to see that we're just going to have to need to use more or less. Again, up to you, your discretion, however much you want to add around this. And that's it. That's really it. <laughs> With this first meatball, I will show you guys exactly what it is that I'm doing in each step. And then the rest of it, I'm just going to kind of go with it. And you guys will see, I'm going to make all the meatballs first and then do all my dipping. But now that we have our meatball done, we're going to go ahead and flour it first. Go ahead and carefully, because you know flour gets messy, go ahead and just dredge it all around. And then after that, we're going to dip it right into our egg mix that we just scrambled up. Scooch that over for you guys. Again, evenly coat this all the way around and then when you're done coating with the egg go ahead and grab that and then we're going to dip it right into our panko. 
with the panko. Again, you're going to see me kind of smashing it in there a little bit and putting it on top because we want to make sure that we press that panko right into it so that it has that panko crunch when you bite into it, right? And don't worry about the shape of it because once you're done doing this, you can obviously just roll it back up into your hands and shape it into a round meatball size again. Set that aside and then you'll see my gloves are really gross here. So what I'm going to do is just throw these gloves away and I'm going to do it all with the clean bare hands. And again this time I grabbed a spoon because I noticed how large that one panko ball is and it's going to take a lot longer to cook and I don't want that. So we're going to make them a little bit smaller and I'm using a spoon, not too much of it. It's again your preference on how large you want these meatballs to be. So again flatten it out, put it on the bottom, scoop it up, put it on top, go ahead and just push it around to make it evenly cover around your rice ball and you don't have any rice exposed. I decided that doing this part again was easier than having to do one at a time and it would go by a lot faster. So I grabbed another plate and added all my meatballs onto it and just started adding them up around there and then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it the same way, flour, egg, then panko. Now here we have two cups of oil sitting in our frying pan and I did start the heat up at medium high while I was making everything first and then I went ahead and dropped it to a lower temperature because this cooks really fast. So carefully add all of your meatballs in one at a time making sure you keep them distant from each other so they can cook evenly around. And you guys are going to notice that once I have all of these in there, I had made five to put in there. I went ahead and started flipping them immediately after because that's how fast they were cooking. Go ahead and keep your eyes on these. You're going to want to move them around and make sure you're cooking them evenly all the way around to make sure every part of that raw chicken is cooked. This will take you about four to five minutes for this set right here to cook. The very first meatball that I did make that you guys saw initially, since that one was a little bit larger, it took about six minutes to cook all the way around equally as delicious as these were. So once these are done cooking, go ahead and set it aside on top of like a paper towel and a plate so you can soak up some of that grease. And I'm sorry this part is too shaky for you. Um, I needed to cut it open so you guys could see it and I was just using my one hand because I decided to do this way after the fact. But here we go. This is how it looks with the chicken and the rice inside with the crispy crunchy outside panko crust. If you can't find katsu sauce, go ahead and use some teriyaki dipping sauce, also equally as delicious. If you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it, and until the next meal, thank you for watching, watch me cook.